I've been doing research on the practical implications of AI, and I just completed a big project with, uh, with uh, colleagues at HPS and MIT and elsewhere where we went to uh, Boston Consulting Group, so one of the top three sort of elite consulting companies. My students are desperate to get in there, right? Really high quality folks. Uh, maybe you've worked with them before. And we just did a really simple experiment. I mean, was that simple, but it was simple in, 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 in practice, in theory, which was we took 8% of their global workforce and we gave some of them access to GPT-4 for a set of 18 realistic consulting tasks and the others not. And they picked the task, they ran the whole thing. Um, and it turned out for the people who were given access to GPT-4, they had a 40% improvement in the quality of their output, 26% faster working out, 12.5% more work done. So a few things here to note. First of all, 40% is an insane number. Um, that's crazy, right? And just to give you a context, when steam power was put into a factory in the early 1800s, it increased individual performance by 18 to 22%. So like, this is a big number that we haven't really seen before. Second, there wasn't anything special here. This was not a specialized version of GPT. This is the same thing you guys have access to here. And this was that without training, with you know, just using the system, basically. Some people got a 10-minute introduction. That was it. And this is a very, very large change. We don't fully understand all of what it means. And again, no one's optimized for use yet, but it was already performing at this very high level. And I think that creates kind of an imperative to think about how we use it. There's another piece that's really interesting, which is that the bottom half participants got the biggest gain. Now, they're all pretty good. They're all at BCG. But the participants in the bottom half of the skill gain got a 43% gain. So people using GPT-4 outperformed people who didn't use it, even if they were better people, better skilled people at this, at this task. The people in the top half of the skill distribution only got a 17% performance improvement. So it acts as a leveler. It basically moved everybody up to the 80th percentile of performance, which, again, not quite sure what to do with that, right? That's a pretty big change also. We're used to having wide-scale performance distribution changes. It seems like that's not what's happening here. Instead, it's a booster. It sort of makes everybody good at work. And this isn't all, right? It turns out it's good at a bunch of stuff we wouldn't have expected it to be. These are results from a study that we just did, that my colleagues at Wharton just did with a, a class that's fairly legendary on product design and development written uh, by Carl Ulrich, who wrote, literally wrote the main textbook on product development. So we have a very good group of MBAs and undergrads who generate ideas in that class. They often get venture funded. We decided to compare their ideas to GPT-4's ideas. GPT-4 absolutely smoked the students. So of the top 40 ideas rated by outsiders as with high willingness to pay, 35 of those came from the AI, only five from the students in the class. So it beat the students on innovation on every measure we have. And basically, it maxed out every innovation score we've, we've got. Uh, we can talk about some downsides of that, but it's important to know. And last piece of data I want to show you is from, there's four studies that all show the same thing now which is what is the impact of generative AI on work? And all these studies show almost the same thing, which is a perfect almost perfect correlation between how much your job overlaps with AI. That doesn't mean replaced by AI. That means AI will have things to do with your job, or you'll have to use AI in your job, and how much you're paid, how much you're educated, and how creative your job is. The more creative your job, the more highly paid you are, the more educated you are, the more you overlap with AI. And there's pretty much complete agreement on this. And on, there's a Goldman Sachs study, uh, OpenAI study, uh, McKinsey study, and one out of NYU, all finding the same thing. So this is not something you could ignore. And also, again, we've never seen disruption at the top before. We've never seen, usually automation happens at, for dangerous, dirty, repetitive work. It doesn't usually happen for highly intellectual work, but that's what's happening.